These are the volunteers who take on the toughest of terrain. Mountain and cave rescue volunteers putting their lives on the line to help others in need. As soon as we get called, we can get teams moving within minutes. But reaching a casualty in a remote location such as the Yorkshire Dales is the first hurdle to overcome. We've joined these dedicated team members on a gruelling training day, scaling rocks and navigating a pitch black cave to help a climber who is trapped. It's um, not as easy as it looks. It's slippy and you feel like you're, you're relying on this basically to stop you falling down. So you have to have faith in this bit of rope and this silver clip. All right, mate. Yeah. Once inside, a race to the scene. Cold water, limited light, falling temperatures. What we're trying to do at the moment is relieve their pain. We're going to get them packaged up and get them out of the cave as soon as possible. And what's your name? Among the team members at Upper Wharfdale Fell Rescue Association, army veterans and doctors like Joe. His knowledge is invaluable. The sort of skills uh, that you use as a doctor in, in a hospital in the UK are quite high end, um, but there's an enormous call for basic first aid and sensible common sense um, medicine um, to look after people who've got into difficulties outside. The minimum number of climbers needed to manhandle a stretcher and other tackle is six. And volunteers like Joe are part of a national institution. Now let's watch a typical rescue operation. The Mountain Rescue Service is over 90 years old. Cave Rescue Council, 50 years. Needless to say, this is only an exercise. And in that time, they've helped save the lives of countless people stuck and stranded in the worst conditions. We rely entirely on, on charitable donations to actually fund the team. Current costs are sort of 40, 45,000 pounds a year plus. Um, but you've seen some of the equipment today. You can imagine it doesn't take long to rack up tens of thousands of pounds worth of, of kit in the store that we need. And Derek knows that a control vehicle fitted with blue lights and radios cost upwards of £60,000. The stretchers use today £2,000 each. And when a helmet costs £50 for 30 team members, that's £1,500 in total. And that's in addition to training. First aid courses and physical tests were all part of it for Abby, who started just a month ago. It's a really, really comforting feeling to know if you're going down a cave, however much you might plan for never having to be rescued, you know that, you know, that might happen to you one day. And so, you know, it, it is absolutely vital. This is the final group of people we'll meet as part of our special series this week. As the weather gets warmer, their workload is likely to increase. But Rick and his colleagues will be ready to respond whenever that call comes in. I've been called out on Christmas Day before. That definitely sticks in your head. Chat with a double pelvic fracture. It can be very, very sort of pleasing, very proud to be part of it and, and exceedingly satisfying when you can come back at the, uh, the end of a day and go, yeah, today I actually made a difference. When you know somebody's alive that would have died if you hadn't uh, turned up, 